Let's yeah. turn to the Pentagon right now sure. uh, in the excerpt of Loose Change that deals with the attack on the Pentagon. Might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, site of the building that's crashed in, and as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around, which would indicate that the entire plane crashed into the side of the Pentagon. Uh, and the official explanation is that the intense heat from the jet fuel vaporized the entire plane. Indeed, from these pictures, it seems that there's absolutely no trace of a fully loaded Boeing 757. But, if the fire was hot enough to incinerate a jumbo jet, then how could investigators identify 184 out of 189 people found at the Pentagon? The Armed Forces DNA Identification Laboratory, which was responsible for the task, was also responsible for identifying the dead in Shanksville. Keep that in mind for later. So what is a Boeing 757 made of? The exact details are not public knowledge. But what we do know is that Flight 77 had two Rolls-Royce RB211 engines made of steel and titanium alloy, which are 9 feet in diameter, 12 feet long, and weigh 6 tons each. Titanium has a melting point of 1,688 degrees Celsius. Jet fuel is a hydrocarbon, which can maintain a constant temperature of 1,120 degrees Celsius after 40 minutes, but only if the fuel source is maintained. The fuel would have burned off immediately upon impact. Therefore, it is scientifically impossible that 12 tons of steel and titanium was vaporized by jet fuel. Dylan Avery, the narrator and filmmaker of Loose Change, a film that is getting tremendous attention. Millions of people have downloaded it. Uh, Dylan and Jason are here in New York uh, in this weekend of the anniversary, giving out thousands of copies of the film. Uh, the issue of the Pentagon, David Dunbar, executive editor of Popular Mechanics. Well, the clip starts with a red herring, uh, claiming that experts say the plane was vaporized, which is untrue. And in addition, in our book, and I believe even in the film, there are, there's uh, evidence of debris on the lawn of the Pentagon. There's plenty of debris that's been found inside the building. There were the largest chunk, was probably the landing gear that punched through the C-ring to make that 16-foot exit hole. So there's plenty of physical evidence, including the data, flight data recorder and forensics that were done, that there was a 757 that struck the Pentagon. And I'm still waiting after five years to see any physical evidence of any kind that would indicate that it was a missile or anything else that hit the Pentagon. Well, Dylan I mean, Avery. we've been waiting five years to see clear video of what actually happened at the Pentagon, and you guys are coming on and saying that you're experts on the fact when nobody has seen what has happened. You guys claim to have seen f you know, photographs that have been released just to you, and I want to know why those haven't been released to the public. Um, what can photographs I have a point about I am not coming on this show. I'm presenting myself as an expert in metallurgy or structural engineering. I'm coming on the show as the editor of this book. And what do we do? We do what you would do, Amy, or any other journalist would do. We talk to people who are experts in the field. And that's what we did with this book in order to debunk these 9-11 uh, these myths. I think I highly recommend it for documentary filmmakers or anybody else who wants to look at the data. That's what we did. We talked to people who were there at the scene. We talked to structural engineers, we talked to aviation crash experts. Jason Berman. Ms. Goodman, I'd just like to address the fact that they have claimed that they have 84 videos through an FOIA request pertaining to what did strike the Pentagon. But the bottom line is, nothing should have struck the Pentagon. We know through the 9-11 Commission testimony that Norman Mineta, the head of the Transportation Department, was in a bunker with Cheney prior to the, the Pentagon strike. Now, this is the only three and a half minutes out of the hundreds of hours that's been censored by C-SPAN. Why? Because he says he's in a bunker with Cheney, and an aide walks in and says, Sir, the plane is 50 miles out. Sir, the plane is 30 miles out. Do the orders still stand? Cheney snaps his head around and says, of course the orders still stand. By the time it was 10 miles out, it was too late, and the Pentagon was struck. That is a direct stand-down order. And if you listen to the NORAD tapes, later on, some of these people are actually tracking these planes, asking to shoot them down, and they're getting a negative shoot-down order. Why is that significant? Well, in June of 2001, Cheney signs a DOD memo putting shoot-down orders in his hands, Rumsfeld's hands, and Bush's hands alone, where it was standard operating procedure. If colonels were to intercept these planes and they saw a threat, they could do the shoot-down order. 
let's back up a little bit. Genetics uh, of popular. We, we started talking about physical evidence for uh, an aircraft hitting the Pentagon. Then aircraft was seen by hundreds of people, eyewitnesses. Um, the, the wreckage was removed from the Pentagon. The bodies were removed from the Pentagon and identified. None of those people have materialized to explain that, that this was a conspiracy. We're not a political magazine. We're about facts. We're about what happens when airplanes crash, um, uh, how buildings are built. And um, so we're not going back to conspiracies that might have been hatched you know, during the Kennedy administration or, or, um, or uh, uh, other eras. But we are looking for physical evidence, positive evidence for any, for any of these claims. Every time we get into detail on one, they fall apart. The stand-on order is a, is a good example. If you look at the NORAD tapes, and, and Vanity Fair, the same magazine that, that did a very laudatory story on, on, on you guys, has a, uh, a story in their current issue that, uh, that includes these tapes. And what you see was total chaos that day. Nobody knew where the planes were. It was complete disorganization. And the, uh, the, the protocol for how to handle uh, a commercial aircraft was Com uh, uh, com uh, that was off course was a complete mess. And in fact, I think on September 10th, 2001, most of us would have been horrified to think that the minute a commercial aircraft goes off course, there'd be an F-16 on our trail with Sidewinder missiles. That was not a country I think many of us would want to live in. Well, Jason, well, what Mr. Meggs doesn't want to address is that that article clearly states that the same kind of thing were happening in the drills as what was happening on September 11th. You have, you have comments like, I've never seen so much real world stuff during an exercise. You have somebody following Flight 11 for 20 minutes after it's hit the World Trade Center. And then you have Cynthia McKinney twice asking for reports on these drills the last time in a 2005 De Department of Defense budget thing from, Ru from uh, Myers and Rumsfeld. And she never gets it. And she asks him, well, did these war games, you know, help or hurt us? And Richard Myers actually said they helped our response on 9-11, which is total nonsense. We know at 8.45 in the morning, the CIA at the NRO building is running a drill of ramming a plane into a building. We know that um, uh, FEMA was here the night before in New York City for a bioterror trail. We also know the FAA is running drills of 20 plus hijack jets going in and out of radar at the same exact time these four jack hijackings are happening. That's what he doesn't want to tell you. I also want to jump in. We still have not seen any pictures of two RB211 engines, the tail section, any of that. We have not seen any significant parts of debris. And I would like to know what sources you have that the landing gear created that punch out hole because I have heard completely different responses. I heard the fuselage is what caused that hole. There's a photo of it. There's a photo uh, of the landing uh, gear causing that 16-foot hole. There's, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that you can do, the, the Pentagon and uh, a number of other engineering organizations did extensive studies of what happened at the building. The building is a reinforced concrete building. The aircraft was shredded uh, to, into relatively small pieces. The heavier, some of the heavier components traveled farther, inc including the landing gear. You don't find an intact tail section when a, uh, a large commercial aircraft hits a reinforced concrete building at 500 miles an hour. This is not a movie. 